Hey guys, welcome back. I, I'm going to put in this little edit because I can't remember to say this in my actual videos, but I am trying to get to 500 subs. I'm at 400. And if you like this content, you like my videos, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. And I'd appreciate a sub. So uh, if you like it, throw me a sub. I'd really appreciate it. But with that, let's get to the video. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Welcome back. So I've wanted to cover this game for a while, and I just haven't done it uh, for one reason or another. It never worked out that I had the time or whatever, but today I'm going to cover this game. This is my favorite game of all time. There's a bunch of really famous games, but this one is my favorite. It's, uh, it's Paul Morphy. Uh, I don't really know all the history about it. I know that he went to Europe, and he went to an opera with these two dudes, and at the opera, for whatever reason, they decided to play a chess game. I don't know. It's like you go to the movies today and somebody whips out Clue. You know, I mean, what, why'd you even go to the movies, right? So, anyway, that's what they decided to do. So, Paul Morphy starts with E4. And they start with E5. Morphy brings out the knight. This is pretty standard stuff here. And they play the Philidor and Morphe strikes immediately at the center. But they bring down the bishop, and this is an inaccuracy. And, I, you know, I'm not a, a genius here when it comes to all the positional nuances of the Philidor, but in its, in its simplest form here, right, you're threatening takes, 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 right? So you're threatening the, to, for them to lose castle rights. So he plays here, Morphe takes... Oh, let's get back to the game. And he re he captures this way, all right. Which so now when he you know when he takes back the pawn here, the queen's not going to be here anymore to take back his queen and, and take his castle and rights. So Morphy takes the bishop, and he takes the piece, and Morphy brings out another piece, or he takes the pawn and Morphy brings out the bishop. Now look at this. Look at the the situation on the board here. You've got. A queen and a bishop developed, both of which are staring at this weak f7 square. Okay? So black has a pawn developed, and white has two pieces. This is a big theme in this game. Alright? So black plays out the knight to protect the f7 square because what you know with the knight here, the queen can't see it, right? So the knight, the queen shifts over. So the queen renews the threat on this pawn while also hitting this pawn. This is a double attack. And this was the, the first, when I very first started learning about chess, this position right here is one that I actually stuck in my, in my pocket, kept it in my, my brain, and remembered this little sequence. You're only a few moves into the game, but I did memorize this, and this one was always kind of special to me because this is the first, like, little trick that I really learned and I was like oh goodness gracious you can swing the queen around look at all this dangerous stuff over here so this is I always like this little maneuver here so he brings the queen around and the queen now defends this and this pawn does hang Morphe could absolutely take this pawn but he develops another piece so again oh shoot let's get back to where we are I lost the place so Morphe could take the pawn Stockfish says that this is the best move, and it, I mean, Stockfish is right, but Morphe wants to get more pieces into the game, get more pieces out. You could win a pawn, but the problem here is if you, you know, if you take this, this move here, and now you've lost your initiative, right? You did win a pawn, but now you're the one with one piece in the game, and he's got more pieces out, and, you know, so Morphe just develops a piece. He just develops his knight, gets another knight into the game. We'll worry about getting material later. So these guys play pawn to c6. And this, for one, takes away the natural square for the knight. But it also isn't developing a piece here. So again, look at the material situation. What's, what's developed, right? You've got a queen, a knight, a bishop versus a, a knight and a queen. So now Mor Morphe was already ahead one piece in the development race, right? Now he's ahead two. So these guys play this move. 
and again, this is not developing. So remember what the material on you know the developed material looks like. You've got four pieces to his two. So Morphe sacks the knight. Because because the scoreboard says that you're up in material does not necessarily mean that you're winning. If this rook is over here and this bishop's here, right, and they never get into the game, the scoreboard's going to count them, but they're not actively playing the game. So this is the reason that it's so important to get your pieces out into the game. So they make this threat, and he exchanges the knight for two pawns. But in the process, where's this king going to go? The queen is blocking the development of the bishop. You definitely ain't castling over here. So he blocks with the knight. Walks into a pin, he pins himself. And I was actually talking about this today. And when you when you decide to pin yourself, things aren't going great. So Morphe castles, and he's got another piece into the attack. So he's got, you know, both bishops, the queen, and the rook are all developed and in the attack. So what does black have? What's the material situation look like here for black? Well, right now, you're threatening to win this, this piece, right? So you, you have this in the game. It's in an absolute pin. This is in the game, but it's in a, a, a relative pin, so you can move it, but it's not a good idea to do so. This guy's not anywhere near getting in the game. This guy's nowhere near getting in the game, and this guy is going to have to go and defend. Has to, right? So... <laughs> What pieces are actually playing, right? What are you actually doing? Let me look at your position. This is bad news. I mean, you know, Morphe's down a, a, a knight, and the computer says he's up 5.2, you know, on the on the scale here. So, I mean, this is a rough position for black. So he slides over and he defends. This is the only way to keep... Because, you know, if he played a random move like this, you could just take this. And if you take here, you're going to lose your queen, all right? So it's 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 all bad, and I mean, really, you could probably come back and, and do something like this. I mean, it's just it's it's all bad, right? So he has to he has to come back and defend, right? Plays the rook over, defends the knight, and Morphe takes it, right? So he sacrificed the knight, and now he sacrifices an exchange. But again, remember, oh shoot, I keep I keep making mistakes. So if if you take this way you lose the queen. If you take this way, you lose the queen. If you take this way, you're going to lose the, the rook. Or the, I'm sorry, the rook is pinned. You, you, you don't necessarily have to snap it off the board. But you, you've traded, uh, you know, you lost the knight, and then you lost an exchange, right? So you've sacrificed an exchange plus a piece. But again, because the scoreboard says, because you have the pieces on the board, it only matters if they're playing. And Morphe's pieces are playing, all right? This guy can't go nowhere. This guy can't go nowhere. This guy can't go nowhere. This guy can't go. I mean, it's just everything's in knots over here. So Morphe, you know, he, he sacks the exchange. The guys take the, 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 the rook, and he brings a second rook. So every piece that Morphe has is in the game now. So he plays the, 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 the queen forward, offering the exchange of queens, and getting this pin on the knight. He breaks the pin. So now his pieces are a little bit more active now, but Morphe takes the rook. Morphe takes the rook. So this is a fork, all right? So you're forking the queen and the king. So what do you play here, all right? What do you play? Well, you don't, you don't want to play this, right? And then you lose your queen. Of course, you know, at this point, I mean, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what's best. What's it say is best? The computer says taking like that's best and, and, and just losing the queen. Yeah, because yeah, material is just so so bad here. Yeah, for, for, for white, you know, losing the queen. You can't even really lose for the queen here, right? You can't you can't trade the rook for the queen because your material's so bad. But look at this, the stockfish is just a scumbag. So anyway, that's the deal. You take the, the rook, so how do you take back? Well, he takes back with the knight. And this seems on the surface like the best way about this, right? You take back. Obviously, you're not going to sack the rook, 
right? And that's the end of the attack, right? You've just sacrificed a lot of material. And there you go. The game, you know, you should be able to develop the bishop, you know, get this bishop into the game. You still got castle and rights. Everything's good, right? Life's good. But this gives the opportunity for the prettiest move in chess. This is the prettiest move I've ever seen. Queen to b8. Queen to b8. What a move. And the idea, and the way that it goes down, is the knight's forced to capture. He has to capture. The king can't step up, right, because the bishop. You can't go over because the, the, the bishop and the queen. So you, you're forced to take the queen. But when the knight moved from f6, it opened the eyes of this bishop. And when he takes, the rook paired with the bishop is checkmate. And that's the game. That, you know, the opera mate. I've heard it called that. That's what I call it. The opera mate. The bishop and the rook together. Checkmate. That is my favorite game. The prettiest game, in my opinion, that's that I've ever seen. I mean, there's a lot of games that, you know, that you never see that don't get the headlines or whatever. I mean, look, chess has been around for a thousand years or something, and it's modern form three, four hundred years, you know? So... There's been a lot of games. So is this the, the prettiest one of all time? I don't know. But it's damn sure the prettiest one that I've ever seen. And this move, that is just absolute chef's kiss, pure class. That's a beautiful move. And Stockfish said that 98.4% uh, accuracy. That's remarkable. I wish that it still done it the old way where you could see what it evaluated the player's skill level at based on the way that they played but it doesn't do that anymore. So Morphe goes in, minus 10 on the scoreboard, but wins the game with the prettiest checkmate ever. So if y'all like that, like, comment, subscribe, all the things. Hope y'all enjoyed this. If you like this kind of historical look at some of these games, let me know. Maybe we'll make some more of these. Y'all have a good evening. We'll see y'all in the next video. See you guys.